Okay guys, in this video I'm going to teach you how to make a really cool cabinet door tutorial. It's super easy, but you need a little patience because there's a lot of pieces and it takes a couple of minutes. But you got this. Let's begin with making a story stick, as this is completely necessary for this ornate cabinet door. I'm starting with my square and I'm making each notch about two inches apart. And this is going to guide me for all my peaks and my dados on this template. Now I'm just going to make some quick reference lines. These are going to be the top notches on the spline going down the center of this cabinet door. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. The X's on this story stick are going to be the parts where I notch out for the lateral supports going down the middle of the door. They'll be dadoed in the spot. Okay, so the story stick is really moving along. I'm sure you're getting the gist of this. I'm just making several reference points, all for the peaks and valleys and the dados. This will really come together for you when you see it completely done. Here's a close-up image. The X marks the spot for where I'm going to dado it out, uh, but we're going to use the bandsaw to cut those out. Making a few reference lines right now for the on center between each notch. This will be for the peaks, so to speak. I'm just going to take my little straight edge and I'm going to basically line it up. These will be all the peaks and valleys that I was discussing earlier that's going to go down the spline on this door. You'll see what I mean. Okay, story stick is complete. Let's go over here to the bandsaw and let's start notching some of these out quickly and efficiently. Okay, the story stick is completely cut up. You can see my mess up, but you get the gist. Now this is gonna be my template for the actual spline that's gonna go down the middle of this cabinet door. Pretty cool, huh? Now let's just go ahead and put it on the actual board that's gonna go down. We're gonna trace out the template, and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so we traced the story stick onto the actual workpiece. Here's how it's going to look. Okay, so now I've got it all marked on my pieces, the spline and all the lateral supports. Okay, so I'm going to take it over to the bandsaw and I'm just going to start making some quick cuts and trying to cut these angles of the peaks out. The center section I will actually notch out on a radial arm saw. It makes it much more fast and much more efficient. Now I did skip a step in filming this video footage and the step that I skipped by accident was I had decided that I was going to pocket hole all these lateral supports. At first I was going to use little dowels but to be honest with filming I kind of forgot so I pocket holed the back of them before I moved over here to this point. So let's get started on the radial arm saw and let's just start dadoing out our center sections. So I decided, as you can see, I'm taking a washer and I'm just going to round out these edges that I'm going to end up chiseling. 
Um, nothing perfect, just trying to give a little old world inspired look. Uh, I thought it looked a little boxy, so I wanted to give a little bit of a feminine touch with some rounded edges, and I thought it would just really uh, come together in the details. So we've got all the pieces notched out, we've got the chisels all lined up, all rounded off. So now let's just try a little dry fit and let's put these pieces together and see how it goes. So after a few quick adjustments, I had to come back to this and now they fit into place perfectly. This is the first time I've ever made this style door and I gotta be honest, I'm really digging it. The cabinet is gonna be an old world inspired look um, and I think I'm really achieving that style. Okay, so now that I got the spline and lateral supports done, I went ahead and made a little cabinet frame. I'm putting this into place now. The only step I'm skipping is where I glued it and pocket hold together. That's a given. Okay, now that the first door is done, let's go ahead and just place it in the cabinet just to get an idea for what the look is going to be. No hinges or any attachments done yet, uh, but definitely on the money for size, shape, and appearance of what I'm going for. This is really cool. You don't see things like this often, and I really pride myself on coming up with cool designs, and this by far is my favorite cabinet door design. So these cabinets that I'm making are gonna go on either side of a fireplace. So there's two cabinets for a total of 12 cabinet doors. That's a lot of doors, but I did it. Here's the first cabinet, take a look at it. This wood is River Rescue Juniper. It's hundreds of years old. Um, I've milled it the best I can with retaining as much texture and grain pop as I can. I really like it, it looks awesome. Now that I got these cabinet doors installed, this video is coming close to an end, but hang in there a little while for me guys. I want to show you the reveal in the client's house. It's really spectacular. And also this is a good point to go ahead and hit the subscribe button to my channel and turn on notifications. Uh, so that way you can be notified every time I drop a video. Thank you guys, hang in there. Now I am making a part two to this video on achieving the finish that I got. I was going for an old world rustic brown and kind of a metal look, um, but distressed. But here it is in the property. Uh, homeowner absolutely went crazy over it. It fit in like a glove. My measurements were spot on, leaving me literally just a tad less than a quarter of an inch on either cabinet to squeeze in this spot. That was tight. I was really sweating bullets on this one. But what do you guys think? The overall appearance is amazing. The finish work really came together and I truly feel like I achieved an old world inspired cabinet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe.